Tjena och varmt välkomna tillbaka till HFV. Helt klart ska vi återvända till Sverige en en gång och denna gång till Svenska Kupen 2024. Welcome to HFV everyone. The main destination Sweden is back on the channel once again after three months and a half break. Oh my god, that went by quite quickly, I must say. The 100-year jubilee season of Allsvenskan starts the last weekend of March, but we have the Swedish Cup, of course. With this competition being somewhat unique in having group stages before the quarterfinals, we all visit the group stage game. Jurgården CF from Stockholm being the home team and the Swedish club, which I have the closest connection to, EF Göteborg being the away team. We have eight groups of four teams. Every single top flight club is participating in this year's group stages. We have 14 teams from the second tier, Nordic United from the third tier and impressively EFK Luleå from the fourth tier of Swedish football. The main point of it is that only the group winners remain in the competition, so it's quite uncommon to have a lower tier side making the quarterfinals. Jurgården and EFK Göteborg both won their obligatory games, so it all comes down to this match day three group final. Jurgården are safe with a draw, having a much better goal difference, but they are absolute favorites to win today's game anyway. The Stockholm side have a plus seven goal difference without conceding a single goal. However, the Blue and Whites of Gothenburg have struggled in both their games. In fact, they almost lost against third-tier Nordic United, but two really late goals in stoppage time saved their day. After that, they won against Hub, they won nil, but that decider also came quite late after the 80th minute. They have a plus two goal difference and not so convincing performances so far. Jurgården won five out of their last 10 meetings against EF Göteborg. I've been there at two of those last 10 meetings. I was lucky enough to document those. And curiously, those two were the ones which EF Göteborg won. But both those games were on their home ground on the west coast of Sweden in Gothenburg. In fact, the last time EF Göteborg won away against Jurgården, Dates back to 2011 September. Now the current stadium of Jurgården Tele2 Arena. They played there since 2013. So since Jurgården played in Tele2 Arena, EF Göteborg have never won against them away in Stockholm. So these days, Blåvitt aren't exactly favorites when it comes to playing Blåränderna in Tele2. Will it be different this time? Probably not, but let's find out. In the summer you would see Jurgården supporters gathering there behind me in Slaktkirkan but the weather is uh, not perfect for uh, that sort of outdoor gathering so they are inside somewhere that way. Well there we go, they look quite happy and they will most probably be as well, end of the day. Tjena! 
Well, we reached a sort of a temporary dead end because uh, the roof is retracted, so the smoke won't be out in uh, in a few minutes. So it's winter, it's uh, like an event arena, a multifunctional arena, that's why it has artificial surface as well, Talat wall. So it has retractable roof uh, for concerts and apparently for football as well. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is my first ever indoor football game. I've been to like almost 300. But yeah, Talat wall arena, multifunctional arena and uh, I think the organizers knew that it's going to be some pyro. So, uh, yeah, because two traditional clubs of Sweden, so you can obviously expect that Jurgården, one of the top three teams in Stockholm, EF Göteborg, uh, the top team from uh, from Gothenburg, even though some supporters would argue with me, I think. So yeah, the match is definitely delayed. Um, sitting closer to the away section, that uh, choice of place is on purpose, obviously. But the Jurgården supporters are making quite great atmosphere as well. And considering how unpopular the cup is, actually, because it's ridiculously unpopular in Sweden, it is actually a great attendance number. actually on the way on time despite all the smoke. Game stopped 48 seconds on the clock so <laughs> interesting. Might not have been the, the best decision to start it. And in this moment, after 25 minutes of break, we carry on from the 45th second. Let's go. And there is a power again, obviously. Two six saves from Pontus Dahlberg in the 41st minute to keep it goalless. We saw an okay first half. Jurgen were dominant, must say, especially towards the end because they had several big chances. Blovit had some shots which looked decent as well, but none of them hit the target. They were actually better than I expected pretty alright considering that they don't play on uh, artificial surface. The atmosphere could improve honestly but uh, I didn't expect much better of uh, Svenska Cup and honestly considering it's a cup it's still still pretty good. If the game carries on in this fashion you're gonna have the, the upper hand even with a draw and they were even much closer to scoring so uh, Jota will really have to improve they have 45 minutes plus additional time for that otherwise it's Jurgården progressing from the group stages we shall see it's uh, quite clear that there is quality in the open play however uh, considering chances shots on target the game could still improve be a bit more enjoyable 
Let's start the second half. A short service announcement before we continue. Traveling to create football content is incredibly special, but it takes up a lot of time, effort, and money. Please support my work by sending thanks below the video with an amount you choose or via the channel's Patreon page you see on screen and in the description. If you don't have the intention of sending money, please support HFV with a like, a share, and a subscribe on the journey of creating educational football content. Thank you very much for your help and a special shout out to my hosts. If you're a teenager, you just ignore what I said and spend the amount on yourself, saying what I did at your age. Don't forget to check out the channel's social media either. Let's carry on. Second yellow for uh, Adam Kalian, meanwhile. And uh, yeah, that, that happens just a minute after Jurgor got in front. It was a really great solo action on the left side, cutting inside, curling it past the keeper with the right foot. 76th minute, one nil for Jurgor, and, and now even a red card for Yevko Itabor, Adam Kalian. So you're going to are as good as through and to be honest they deserve it as well because they were absolutely superior in the first half and in the second half even though the board had some chances and, that, and there were periods when they were better in open play it was still you're going to be dominant if you look at the whole of the game. some away supporters leaving just in front of me well yeah it's not not the best times being in a home section as a away supporter you're going to double their lead they're waving to each other with the home fans like no love lost love it so it's Dennis Hume doubling the lead for Jurgoran in the 81st minute from a rebound close in after 
I think it was a shot from Radatina. Blue with one man down as well, so they might score a third, I don't know. It's basically decided 10 minutes before the end. That sort of thing you can't really capture because uh, Pontus Dahlberg just missed out on hitting the ball properly and uh, he just pinned off his, uh, the outside of his foot and ended up in the net 3 near Jurgoran in the last minute of additional time, 94th minute. It's uh, one of the usual results here for the Fuerte Boy, either 3 nil or 1 nil defeat. But this is a clear own goal. It's uh, I don't think EFK deserved this, but uh, yeah, the win was clear for you, Gordon. Anyway. Jurgoran through to the quarterfinals as a CD team plus 10 goal difference without conceding hats off for this performance. With two of their new signings, Gulliksen and Hummet scoring, they have every reason to look forward to a possibly successful season. Not the case on the blue and white side who played two CDMs in the centre-back positions, one of them sent off as well. Centre-back talent Bongsbu left the team in the winter and no proper replacement for him so far it seems. As much as I like Asku, the head coach of EFK Tabor, poor decision making from him on the day on the 71st minute he subbed off basically the whole backline of EFK Göteborg and at that point it was still nail-nail on the scoreboard. That third goal you only saw the ball going in the net, it was from the own half of Jurgen, central defensive midfielder Sabovic had a shot or I don't even know whether it was a shot but Dalbert failed to hit it so eventually not an own goal. It's really poor decision making from the keeper to, to come out of his goal it's unfortunately not the first time we saw it from Dahlberg, remembering the Aiko away game last year when he shot Svensson in the head to give Aiko the goal. Yeah, he made some great saves as well, but I think this goalkeeper action just summarizes the whole situation around the FK Tabor right now. The cup will carry on with Jurgoran, Malmö, Aiko, Degefors, Hamsta and Bromma Poikana already in the knockout. That was it guys for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. If so, join me on the channel's socials. You can see all possibilities on screen. Check out the Sweden playlist link, one in the description. You also have respective playlists for the two teams playing today. Jurgoran playlist link 4, Klovit playlist link 5. <laughs> I was AJFB, take care, ses nästa gång. Varsågod! Ja, för fan.